if we want to address any issue or to act upon it first of all we have to accept it and believe me when you accept uh, for any issue that it exists then only you can be the change and you be the change to be able to accept that any issue exists or any problem exists you have to first know about it and to be able to know about any have the curiosity to know, know about any problem you have to first feel it so feel it to know it know it to accept it and then accept it to act upon it climate change is no different it is no exceptional we can deal with this in the same phenomena we must have heard of uh, climate change through various news articles various summit various tech talks or uh, uh, paris agreement various agreements we, we keep hearing through new channels uh, but uh, do we really engage with them can we relate us with them the probable answer is no so today i am going to tell you about my personal experience how i felt uh, climate change uh, in my life and the latter one latter part i will tell you about uh, green building concept how it can help or contribute positively for uh, climate change so i belong to a, a small town in madhya pradesh it is uh, in the north eastern part of madhya pradesh and uh, there i lived in a government quarter where uh, uh, the water supply was uninterrupted uh, during my primary school days it was uninterrupted from 6 in the morning to 9 in the evening by the time i reached my secondary school the water supply was restricted to 1 hour in the morning and 1 hour in the one hour in the evening now when i uh, reached my senior secondary school the water supply there was no water supply actually we have to install pumps to able to extract the water from the municipal, municipal water tap to be able to fulfill our need and when i was in my engineering uh, we really had to call the tankers to fulfill the same need so that is one problem the second problem uh, i want to quote is about uh, 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 in, in the first problem itself please understand that i am not talking about the about my rights to have the natural distribution of natural resources like water to me or how it should be whether it should be uh, freely through taps or through water pumps or through tankers but the problem is the severity of problem is not uh, linear it is exponential it is exponential problem and we have to act upon it smartly so that we can tackle it exponentially and not linearly now the second example and please understand that i am uh, quoting these simple examples so that each and every common man can also relate to it the second example is about microclimate during my childhood days i visited uh, my relatives in village uh, village full of uh, mud houses Uh, surrounded by mango trees uh, we used to enjoy uh, mango tree uh, in hot summer beneath the beneath the tree and uh, in the night we used to sleep under the uh, sky only without any fan without any uh, electricity even and we were quite comfortable and that was a very nice sleep i can say to you now can you imagine to sleep uh, in in uh, in the evening or in the night in delhi open to sky without any fan no it's not possible because we all can feel the heat wave even after 9 pm uh, in hot summer days i i think you must agree with me now you must be uh, wondering why how these examples are related to climate change to uh, answer your question uh, i will quote one more example suppose you have 100 acre of land and that 100 acre of land is uh, enough to accommodate one good size of village now in that 100 acre of land suppose 40 acres are of forest or trees uh, 25 acres are crop land 15 acres are your residential setup and 15 acres of your industrial setup and 5 acre water bodies 
it seems like an ideal condition where uh, uh, your ecological footprint is almost equivalent to your uh, bio capacity. Uh, bio capacity is uh, 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 is all the services that uh, we regrow in a year, all the crops, all the food that we can regrow, all the forestries, all the fishes that we can regrow within the year. And when we consume them, they become our ecological footprint. And please understand that uh, bio capacity is not all the natural resources that are available with us. For example, if you have a water body, and in that water body there are 100 fish, and that 100 fish can reproduce 50 fish every year. Now, if you consume that 50 fish uh, within that year, and the 100 fish remains for the reproduction for the next year, then in the next year you will again have the 50 fish to consume and 100 fish for reproduction, and the cycle will go on. Now, imagine uh, if you consume more than 50 fish, 60 or 70 fish, then the next year there would be only 80 to 90 fish for reproduction, and you will have only 45 fish, new fishes. And if you continue consuming 60, 70, 80 fishes, then after four or five years, there won't be any fish left in your water body for reproduction or for consumption. See, uh, here, 100 plus 50, 150 fish is not your bio capacity. Even the 100 fish that are available for reproduction is also not your bio capacity. Only the 50 fish that is being reproduced is the only bio capacity that you have and that you can consume for the sustainable development. Now, again, take an example uh, in, in the same 100 acre of land. Suppose you cut down the 30 acre of forest out of 40 acre to accommodate more people, to accommodate more industries, more commercial area, to feed yourself, to fulfill your uh, need and grade. Now, everybody can answer that uh, if we cut down 30 acre of forest, then the pollution will go up, the consumption will go up, and average temperature of that 100 acre land will also go up. Your heat island effect will go up, right? So it is really very much related to each other. The, your, your ecological footprint versus your bio capacity versus what you, you are consuming, how you are consuming towards the climate change. So you have to first feel it to act upon it. Now, what would be the probable solution? There must be hundreds of probable solutions to it. I'm not going to talk about all the solution, but uh, the only one that is green building. See. Uh, Energy is one of the most important aspects that we consume on our daily basis. And 40% of the energy is being consumed in the building sector itself. 40% is a huge amount. The rest are consumed in transportation, uh, industrial, uh, etc. But 40% is huge amount. And it's not only about energy. Building sector is also consuming water. They are also producing a lot of waste. They are uh, pro uh, capturing a lot of... Uh, 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 say materials, they are using lots of materials. So what would be the probable solution? So today I am going to list some of the solution, uh, some of the green building solution that can be used by every common person. There are very much technicality involved in a green building uh, solution. There might be some uh, technical terms, but here I am only listing those measures that can be implemented by even a common man. The first being is selection of your site. So when we, we want to create a development or built up area, we have, we, we want to locate our uh, uh, setup in a very prime location and, and there is no problem on it. But as far as sustainability is concerned, please don't locate in a green field. Because when you use green field for your construction, where will you grow up your crops? And if you are not able to grow up your crops, you will again go and cut down all the forest to accommodate the cropland, right? The first one is try and locate, locate your home, locate your buildable land at non-green uh, field area. The second one is top soil preservation. Now, this seems uh, uh, very, uh, not very new topic, top soil. Uh, you know, it takes thousands of e thousands of years for the nature to create soil. 
and top soil is 8 inch of soil that is fertile. After that, the soil is compacted and it is not fertile. And what we do when we go for a development or construction, we dig out all the soil we, for the foundation or for the basement. We then again backfill all those soil or we make bricks out of that soil and then construct our buildings. Imagine that top 8 inch of soil could have been used for your crop, for your forestation, for your vegetation. And after the construction, you procure uh, soil from somewhere else for your landscaping or vegetation. So preserve that 8 inch of top soil so that you can reuse it. If you are not able to reuse, reuse it, donate to some nursery or donate to your neighbors. Your neighbors would be happy. Then the third is bicycle friendly infrastructure. Believe me, bicycle is a very nice thing to have. And even uh, uh, some of the prime ministers or uh, ministers of the nations are also using bicycle and it is not worth thing to bicycle to your uh, destination. Try and use bicycle and create a bicycle friendly infrastructure wherever you are developing. The third one is local uh, microclimate reduction. So the heat island effect that I earlier talked about is because of the urban heat island effect and it is uh, basically the increase in average temperature of your city area as compared to your uh, village area in the night time because in the city area you, we have created uh, jungles of concrete and they, they accumulate heat during the daytime and re radiate it during the night time that is why the average, temp average temperature in the night time increases and we feel uncomfortable so to reduce that in your home or in your build up space try and paint or have a white finish to your roof and have shaded hard paved area in your ground, whether it is road, whether it is pathway, just shade it through trees or shade it through any other natural means so that the heat may not be accumulated and it is not re-radiated during night time. It is very simple measure that anybody can use. The next is uh, uh, water conservation and harvesting. It seems very obvious but we do not uh, do it. See, uh, when we go to wash our hand in our home, uh, the tap in our home flows 10 liter of water per minute. And if we wash our hand for 30 seconds, just imagine we are wasting 5 liters of water per hand wash. And if you use just 100 rupees a liter below that water tap, it can reduce from 10 liter per minute flow to 2 liter per minute. And for 30 seconds, you would be using only 1 liter of water instead of 5 liter. So guys, you can use, you can save 4 liters of water per hand wash, just imagine, as simple as possible. And then, uh, every day uh, in our home, we feed our over tanks so that we can, re we can use the water whenever we want during the all day time, right? But we are not feeding the groundwater tank, that is natural tank, tanki in our uh, ground. We, we are not recharging it, we are using it whenever we require, we are pulling it out, but we are not recharging it. You, you might have heard uh, from your relatives or uh, uh, any other people that my bore well is uh, getting dried up. There is no water left in my bore well. This is because we have just taken out all the water and we are not recharging it. So try and create some infrastructure, some structure so that the rainwater from your home can be uh, directed towards groundwater recharge. Just create a soap pit as simple as possible. Then the next one is energy conservation and efficiency. Please understand that there is difference between energy conservation and energy efficiency. When you use technology to reduce your energy consumption uh, for same output, like you are replacing your CFL or incandescent bulb, that 60 watt bulb that we used earlier, if you are replacing it with LED lights for the same output, the 60 watt can be replaced from 10 watt LED bulb. That is called efficiency. And when you are using daylight and switching off the art, all the artificial light and you are not using it, that is called conservation. So you can start conserving the energy from day one. There is no additional infrastructure, no additional uh, money economy is required. And when possible, you invest in better technology so that you can create efficiency as well. 
you can uh, try and also uh, have solar PVs or any form, other form of renewable energy to fulfill your energy needs as well. The next is material uh, and resources optimization. <laughs> so we all use materials. Uh, means many of uh, the previous speaker has uh, told us that to use local materials, have recycled content uh, materials, so that the embodied energy of overall construction can be minimized, and we are close to uh, the net zero concept. Uh, we generate a lot of waste, so the waste can be channelized. The organic waste can be converted into useful compost in our homes too. It is very simple process. Everybody can do so, but we are not doing it. It is very simple. You can Google it how to compost and there you can create your own machine to compost your daily organic waste. It is as simple as possible. And then the last one is uh, try and uh, first be aware of the passive design concept and how you can implement some passive features to get or harvest more daylight out of uh, the available in your home or in your built up space. See, as per our current consumption, we require 1.7 earth to fulfill our all needs. 1.7 earth guys, hello. And we still expect that the climate will not change. There is no 0.7 earth available elsewhere. We are taking from the same earth. And please remember, if you want to change or address anything, feel it. Feel it to know it, know it to accept it, and accept it to act upon it. Thank you.